it's the big, important journals that are the ones that can most successfully promote you. Why? Because they aren't afraid to publish a graduate student. I had a student from Cyprus many years ago at Indiana University, so also not an absolutely top-notch university, a little good one. He wrote an article based on the child, on his childhood me memories of his home village. And uh, that was even before he did his field work for his PhD dissertation. And guess what? It was accepted for publication in American Ecology. A minor journal wouldn't have dared to do that. So try it. You may be pleasantly surprised. Third principle, a rejection is not a rejection. Now, most of the time, people will be telling you in life at large, learn to take no for an answer. But this is one area where you don't take no for an answer. You say, you don't really mean no, do you? And you try again. Either you go back to the same journal, or publishing house, or you try something else. But don't give up. None of you would be here in this excellent department if you were idiots. So just get that out of your system. None of you are idiots. You're all highly intelligent people. The ones who fail to get published are not the ones who are stupid. They are the ones who don't have the guts to keep going and who get too easily discouraged. So don't give up. Right? And that's exactly, I think, the way these things work. Another principle concerns length. Don't go on and on when you don't have to. So if you are told that articles should not be over 8,000 words, don't say, well, would they, would they really mind if I made it 9,000? Actually, when I go over my prose, I can usually find a great deal of that true. Words that are repeated, phrases that are too long. Um, sometimes people have an irritating habit of repeating the first name of every author they cite every time they cite that person. <laughs> yes, I can see some guilty starts right there in the audience. Don't do it, because it get rid of, you'll get rid of 20 words right there if you just eliminate, maybe even 100 words, if you just eliminate all those first uh, references. So next time you quote Michael Hertzfeld, it's Hertzfeld, not Michael Hertzfeld, except for the first entry. And don't quote him too often. <laughs> you get bored with him anyway. And if you do have to mention a lot of what he's done, put it all in one or two or three citations. Don't spread it all over the place. That comes, right? Or if you have a sentence that begins, I think that, well, it's obvious you think so. So cut out the three words, I think that. If you keep doing that sort of thing, it's amazing how much shorter the article is. I do this myself all the time. Uh, people will write, uh, uh, for example, uh, in analyzing these materials, I came to the conclusion that, no, no, so you cut all that out. It's obviously you were analyzing the materials and you came to a conclusion, here it is. So be ruthless, use the razor, cut it all out, suddenly you will have a very well barbered article. I just recently, uh, I'm co-editing um, a, a collection of essays. Some of them were written by people with not much experience and they were too long. And I basically gave them a haircut. I'm an expert on hair. <laughs> You know, like, like I, I mean, academics are always experts on the things they don't have, right? So I'm an expert on giving haircuts. <laughs> and, and I gave these two articles haircuts. One was reduced by 1,000 words, and one I got down by 1,500 words out of a total of, I think, about 7,000 or 8,000. They were supposed to be around 6,000 to 6,500, so they were cut down to size. And if I say so myself, they read much better afterwards, and my co-editor assured me that that was the case. <laughs>